Welcome to Holy Ghost Catholic Church in Omaha, Nebraska. Although our church is now open for Mass, we encourage older adults and those with weakened immune systems to continue practicing social distancing because of COVID-19. We will continue to offer online Mass during the pandemic. We appreciate and thank you for joining us today. Our celebrant for this Mass is Father William Sanderson. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, I have greatly sinned. Thoughts and in my words, and what I have done, and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. 
let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of the universe, grant, we pray, that the whole, <coughs> that the whole creation set free from slavery may render your majesty service and ceaselessly proclaim your praise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, I myself will look after and tend my sheep. As a shepherd tends his flock, when he finds himself among his scattered sheep, so will I tend my sheep. I will rescue them from every place where they were scattered, when it was dark and cloudy. I myself will pasture my sheep. I myself will give them rest, says the Lord God. The lost I will seek out, the strayed I will bring back, the injured I will bind up, the sick I will heal, but the sleek and the strong I will destroy, shepherding them rightly. As for you, my sheep, says the Lord God, I will judge between one sheep and another, between the rams and goats. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through man, the resurrection of the dead came also through man. For just as in Adam all die, so too in Christ shall all be brought to life. 
but each one in proper order. Christ, the first fruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to his God and Father, when he has destroyed every sovereignty and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. When everything is subjected to him, then the Son himself will also be subjected to the one who subjected everything to him, so that God may be all in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the Lord be in your heart and on your lips that you may proclaim his holy gospel worthily and well. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit upon his glorious throne and all the nations will be assembled before him. And he will separate from them one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink a stranger and you welcomed me, naked and you clothed me, ill and you cared for me, in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and welcome you or naked and clothe you? When did we see you ill or in prison and visit you? And the king will say to them in reply, Amen, amen, I say to you, whatever you did for one of the least brothers of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you accursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink a stranger, and you gave me no welcome, naked, and you gave me no clothing, ill and in prison, and you did not care for me. Then they will answer and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or ill or in prison and not minister to your needs? He will answer them, amen, I say to you, what you did not do for one of these least ones, you did not do for me. And those will go off to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
in the long history of the church, the feast we celebrate today, that of our Lord Jesus Christ the King, is relatively new. It was established in 1925 by Pope Pius XI. Originally, it was observed on the last Sunday in October. But with the reform of the Roman calendar following the Second Vatican Council, in 1970, it was moved to be the last Sunday of the season known as Ordinary Time. It is a kind of culmination of the entire mystery of salvation. Jesus was proclaimed as king from the time of the Annunciation. Remember how the Archangel Gabriel said to Mary, the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father and of his kingdom there will be no end. His throne at the beginning was a wooden crib. Then before Pontius Pilate, he admitted, I am a king, but my kingdom is not of this world. And he was given a new throne, also of wood, the cross on which he died. Even at the beginning of his life, remember, on the Epiphany, we celebrate the visitation of the Magi, and one of the gifts they brought was what? It was gold because they came to adore a king. But now we focus on him, his kingship in ultimate glory. However, there is a different image or dimension of his kingship that comes through in each of the scripture readings. The prophet Ezekiel was speaking God's message to the Israelites in the time of the Babylonian captivity. God had not been pleased with the direction and rule of the Jewish kings and the priests and those in authority and allowed the Babylonians to invade the land and carry them off into slavery. And yet he promised that he would bring them out, he would pasture his sheep and bring back the lost and the strayed, and, the, and he would heal the injured and the sick, he would heal and such. He would truly be the good shepherd. And then, of course, that image is dominant in the responsorial psalm, Psalm 23, that identifies the Lord as my shepherd, a beautiful image that has brought comfort to countless people through the centuries and will continue to do so. But St. Paul highlights a slightly different aspect of his kingship in this passage from the first letter to the Corinthians. The entire of chapter 15 from which this is taken speaks about the resurrected Christ. And just as God had spoken through Ezekiel, about, I will judge between one sheep and another, between rams and goats. St. Paul speaks about the kingship of Christ coming after he destroys all of God's enemies. And he describes, too, the ultimate enemy is death itself. Because when Christ comes in final glory, as we read in the Gospel passage, even death itself will cease when the end of time and life and the world as we know it will be transformed. There will be a new heaven and a new earth as we read in the book of Revelation. But the kingship of Christ highlighted in this passage from the Gospel of St. Matthew is as judge, a judge who is merciful and just. Remember too that this passage from Matthew 25 is taken from the fifth of the five great sermons of Jesus that Matthew records. Throughout the past number of weeks I've reminded you that as Matthew directed his gospel primarily toward Christians who had been Jews, he was wanting to stress the reality that 
Jesus replaced Moses as lawgiver and prophet and now as king. Moses wasn't a king, but that is one of the dimensions of the threefold mission of Christ that comes through very strongly. Now we hear of the final judgment in terms of a shepherd. Let's go back to Ezekiel and bring that image forward, Psalm 23 as well. And he speaks about separating sheep from goats. The sheep, of course, represent the souls of the just, the goats, the souls of the condemned. The focus in particular here is on those who performed what we call the spiritual works, or the, rather the corporal works of mercy, feeding the hungry, giving drink to the thirsty, clothing the naked, visiting those in prison and such. These are all very important. Of course, they're not the only things that the Lord looks at. Remember too that the final judgment comes after the individual judgment. The individual judgment takes place shortly after death itself and one's eternity is determined. It's not determined by a judge who is capricious and but excuse me, but by one rather who judges us according to the way we lived, according to our deeds. He will praise us for the good we did and he will evaluate, of course, as well, the sins we committed from which we did not repent. It is interesting to note in this depiction of the final judgment, and nothing changes then, Nobody's individual judgment changes, but rather we have the opportunity, it's hard to imagine, that everybody will know everybody else's final destiny. But let's look at these things that are depicted in this image of judgment of the just from the condemned concerning the works, the, spirit, the corporal works of mercy Notice the reaction of those in the second group, the goats, if you will. When did we see you hungry and not feed you? When did we see you a stranger or naked or ill or in prison and not minister to you? Remember the parable of the rich man and Lazarus, the poor beggar who sat at his door day by day. He, the rich man didn't even notice him. He didn't pay any attention, but when he was being tormented in the flames, he wanted Abraham to send poor Lazarus to go and just bring him a bit of water to cool his tongue. But that was not possible. As Lazarus said, or as the rich, or as God said, there is a gulf, a division between us that no one can cross from one side to the other. And so, as the church year, year ends and we focus on the kingship of Christ, the kingship that was promised to him through the archangel Gabriel, the kingship, as he told Pilate, which is not of this world, but one that endures forever. It is, of course, a very vivid and important reminder of the need we have while we live of always preparing that we might be found worthy to enter into the fullness of that kingdom. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, 
the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord is King, coming before the throne of heaven. We voice our petitions to our merciful Father. Our response to the petitions is, ruler of the universe, hear our prayer. That the church will always be a place where the truth, mercy, love, and wisdom of Christ the King will shine forth. We pray to the Lord, ruler, ruler of, of the, the universe, universe hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For world leaders, that they will see their power as a sharing in the authority of God and reflect it in the way they govern. We pray to the Lord, ruler of the, the universe, universe, hear our prayer. For the victims of tyranny, persecution, oppression, or racism, that the justice of Christ the King will rid the world of every trace of hatred. We pray to the Lord. Ruler of the universe, hear our prayer. For all parishes, schools, and ministries of the Archdiocese of Omaha who testify that to the truth of God's love, we pray to the Lord. Ruler of the universe, hear our prayer. For all those providing medical care, that the Good Shepherd will know their need and will lift their weary spirits and give them compassion and strength. We pray to the Lord. Ruler of the universe, hear our prayer. For the grace this week to surrender ourselves in obedience to the kingdom of God, we pray to the Lord. Ruler of the universe, hear our prayer. For the parishioners of St. Stanislaus and Holy Ghost for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Ruler of the universe, hear our prayer. For those who are homebound or in care centers, for those who are ill or in need of healing, including Paul Eubanks, Richard Callahan, Kathy Menser, Brenda Tilkowski, Matt Bryant May, Pat Connie Nov Novacek, John Mattia, Ken Knott, and Carm Cogan. May all who are being treated for or recovering from the coronavirus, we pray to the Lord. Ruler of the universe, hear our prayer. For those who have died, George Bogatz, Deacon John, Deacon John DiGiulio, father of Donna Newell, all who have died from the pandemic around the world, and for the loved ones whose names are inscribed in our parish book of remembrance, we pray to the Lord. Ruler of the universe, hear our prayer. For all the personal intentions that are written in our parish book, and for those personal intentions that each of us hold in our hearts at this time, we now offer in silence. For each of these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Ruler of the universe, hear our prayer. 
Loving Father Christ the King has made us into a kingdom. Renew our obedience and faithfulness and be pleased to receive the prayers we offer in faith through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice by which the human race is reconciled to you, we humbly pray that your Son himself may bestow on all nations the gifts of unity and peace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you anointed your only begotten Son as our Lord Jesus, you anointed your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the oil of gladness as eternal priest and king of all creation, so that by offering himself on the altar of the cross as a spotless sacrifice to bring us peace, he might accomplish the mysteries of human redemption and making all created things subject to his rule, he might present to the immensity of your majesty an eternal and universal kingdom, a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love, and peace. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and George, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. 
Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command <clears throat> that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them, as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. 
to us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are they who are called to the banquet of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
body of Christ. 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 Body of Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O good Jesus, hear me. Within your wounds, hide me. Separated from you, let me never be. From the evil one, protect me. At the hour of my death, call me. And close to you, bid me that with your saints I may be praising you forever and ever. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Let us pray. Having received the food of immortality, we ask, O Lord, that glorying in obedience to the commands of Christ, the King of the universe, 
we may live with him eternally in his heavenly kingdom, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus Christ, our Sovereign King, who is the world's salvation, all praise and homage 